Well, I mean, I feel like this ain't gonna end well. When does it ever for Jason Todd? Why does he imagine her killing him? Here we go. This is the breakout. I wonder if he'll reveal his face to him. That'd I be think cool. he will. I'm not going to lie. That'd be a sweet revenge. Hey, guys. Welcome back to our YouTube channel. I'm Pudgy. And I'm Spartan. And today we're watching season three of The Titans, episode five called Lazarus. So the last episode, we saw a really cool showdown, the second showdown between Nightwing and Red Hood, which was awesome. We also discovered that Scarecrow was actually working with the Red Hood, which was, you know, I mean, you call that, that you thought that he was going to play a bigger role. I thought too, but I didn't know how soon. And yeah, and it was cool to see that they sort of tied that into the Red Hood. They're continuing this original Red Hood story that we haven't seen before, which is which has been really enjoyable. I feel like Scarecrow is like his puppeteer, but I feel like that's not the full picture yet as well, though. Yeah, there's definitely more to uncover. And I wonder how, like, to what degree Scarecrow is actually controlling Red Hood mm. and how much is this Red Hood's own twisted version of, you know, I don't know, trying to get back at those who he feels wronged him. But yeah, this episode is called Lazarus, so I'm sure it's going to involve the Lazarus pit in some shape or form, whether we go back and see whether Jason Todd was resurrected from the Lazarus pit or if it's um, someone else completely like Wonder Girl. Oh, whether it follows. Oh, okay, I, I thought it would be a backstory, but yeah, it could follow the... We haven't seen anything of Raven and Wonder Girl yet, so that could be interesting too. Although I don't really care about that right now, to be honest. <laughs> um, I would like to go find out who actually resurrected Jason Todd because... Mm. Normally, it's Raz al Ghul or Talia al Ghul. It, Scarecrow doesn't really have any involvement with the Lazarus Pit, so it wouldn't make sense for him to be the one who resurrected him. So I feel like there's a bit of a, a, a plot hole waiting to be answered. I'm kind of hoping by the end of the season, we kind of get like this feel that the team is really upset about Hawk's death because uh, we haven't felt that in the last couple episodes. So yeah, I think that's something that I'm really looking forward to and hoping... Yeah, the way his death was done was definitely really cool. Mm. And then the following episode, it just seemed like they skipped over that and it didn't align with everything they built up for his death. So it felt like it was... It didn't feel like there was a satisfying tribute to everything that Hawk has contributed to the Titans yet. So maybe they're saving that. Maybe they've just left it be, but it's a bit of an awkward thing. Remember, guys, if you enjoyed our reaction, give the video a like. It helps out the channel a lot. Let us know in the comments down below what you love the most about our reaction or about the episode, or even if, if we missed some important plot points, feel free to fill us in as long as there's no spoilers for upcoming episodes. And hit that subscribe button if you want to stay tuned for our upcoming uploads as we finish the rest of season three of the Titans and then continue on to other series as well. All right, Let's ready? Let's go. Let's go. So he's run away now. Oh, he's seen Nightwing in the reflection. We won. Nightwing lost. You don't know him. He won't stop. Not after Hawk. I feel like they have different goals. They're not on the same page. I should fucking kill you right now. A lot of people should kill me. I need to know the <laughs> fucking plan! We immerse the good citizens of Gotham in a world of fear and terror where there is no one to protect them. Then when they feel that all hope has been exhausted, we swoop in and be the answer to their fear. What kind of twisted sense of justice is... Jason Todd in, into. I don't feel like he's fully convinced in that plan anyways. Set. So it was the Scarecrow's toxin. So the drug is like, uh, I wonder if he's going to have, it could be that kind of like Elijah in Vampire Diaries. Mm. It could be that he has massive withdrawal after he breaks from the drug and realizes what he's done. And maybe that's when they'll get that whole closure. Yeah, That maybe. would be good. That would be good. But I don't know. One can hope. <laughs> Three months, Three months ago. ago. All right. Give us some answers. <sighs> so he must have just woken up at this. Maybe. Is what it looks like. This has like horror vibes. <laughs> Here we go. Why does he imagine her killing him? Don't go. You still have time, Jason. Interesting. Interesting choice to have her. They weren't even close. Mm. That's why I'm wondering why. You're safe. Jason. You're home. Oh, this is before he died, I think. It's been a few weeks of these dreams. You sure you're okay? No more Robin until you see her. 
<laughs> I've set an appointment for tomorrow. Bruce, please don't do this. I love how he's already like ahead of the game. If Leslie agrees with you, you can go back to being Robin. But until I hear the word from her, you're shut down. Damn. I mean, agree with Bruce here for sure. But just not too much of a loose cannon. So, I mean, looking back on it, when Barbara and Dick were going full ball on him, I mean, we do see now that Bruce was kind of looking out for him. I guess we'll get more information as to what went wrong, but poor guy. <laughs> and then that led him to kill Joker. Hmm. So I stayed in San Francisco. Fuck San Francisco. That whole thing was a mistake. Gotham's okay. where I need to be. So this is his spite with the Titans. Mm. You've been different since you've been back. Like something happened over there? Nothing happened. I was bored, so I left. But his ass beat twice. Yeah, I was gonna say a little bit more than bored. Where's this guy who's picking up the street kids? I heard he's hanging near a shelter on Dunsmere. Show me. <laughs> That's a bit creepy, the way he's asking. So maybe they'll part of an orphanage together or something. I don't yeah. know. Yeah. Or strays together. Let's go introduce ourselves. Jay. Just a conversation. That's all. So I mean, I feel like this ain't gonna end well. When does it ever for Jason Todd? Especially when he's talking like this. Oh, yeah. Wrong. You look like you can handle it. <laughs> I love your smile. Well, I think they got the right guy. It sounds like a creep. Do I know you? <laughs> I'm fuck. She's off. <laughs> we hate clowns. Joker specifically. You know him? You're not that intimidating without your suit. I know. I think he forgets that. You haven't done enough time. To look at me like that. Yeah. You have no idea who I am. <laughs> I mean, that's true. True, but it doesn't seem that intimidating, does it? Where's your swag, cowboy? Damn. Normally he could deflect that, but his fear. Far out. So you can see why he really wanted to prove that he could do it. Just for you, cutie. Fuck, <laughs> ah, Jason, bro, you let down, man. I was expecting something badass. Jason, you humiliated yourself, man. But yeah, Batman definitely made the right call having him go to the shrink. Yeah. Tell me what I can do to help. Get the you fuck away from me, okay? Go! Get the fuck away from me! Damn. Damn. That cockiness didn't play out very well. He's really burning all these bridges. My mother was a smack addict and it killed her. My dad was murdered by Two-Face. Oh. Didn't know that. That's Jonathan Crane. Oh. Oh, interesting. He wasn't the scarecrow when I knew him. Obsessed with fear. Driven by ego. He was my friend until he tried to kill me. Oof. Damn. What happened? Who's the shrink here? <laughs> His fear gas. Oh no. We're here to talk about you. <laughs> it was as close to hell as you can get when you're alive. If Bruce hadn't saved me. Mm. Very interesting. If you're that fucked up, how are you a therapist? I'm honest. Good answer. Yeah, I like it. We're done? Come back and we'll try again. Mm, she's interesting. Might even tell you a story about Superman. <laughs> Uh, interesting. Should it be different? Mm. Kind of have to be if you're in that line of work. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And he needs that because he thinks he knows it all. Mm. There's a memento from all the people they've beaten. All the tokens. Oh, mm. that's Rise Like Wall Up and Yeah. Soul, it's Firefly, I think. It's not like Catwoman. Maybe. With the whip. That's what I thought, yeah. Oh, so the memento they've got of the Fear Toxin. Oh, interesting. Damn. I wonder what drew him to it if, like, she's saying that it's hell. You shouldn't creep up on people. It's a skill that comes in handy. <laughs> <laughs> You're looking at my scarecrow, keepsakes. Leslie told you about her encounter. What goes on in your sessions is between you and her. He's just smart. <laughs> Luther's up to something. Can you handle dinner? Yeah. No order in. I like how they get a bit of some lore around it. Yeah. Metropolis being Superman's home, Luther being Lex Luthor. Seeing Leslie was a huge step to getting back on track. I know it wasn't easy. I'm proud of you, son. That's nice to hear. Son? Yeah. 
Mm. It's a nice moment, but where did it all go to shit? Yeah, it was. It'll be like a good phase where he's open up, and then it'll just die in the ass. Robin? Freedom. Just see. Robin, on the other hand, is a construct made by a crime fighting vigilante who has a borderline personality disorder. <laughs> Robin is the living embodiment of that man's projection, and that's what you're afraid of not being? Interesting perspective. So what are you afraid of? Not being Robin or having to be yourself? I wonder how she influences him potentially becoming the Red Hood or not. Yeah, because it looks like he's making some breakthroughs with her, but then it's like, we all know something breaks at some point. You also tell he's interpreting her things with two choices and he's trying yeah. to decide. Just because you're afraid doesn't mean you're broken. Ah. Yeah, it's a good line. Is that Bruce? Yeah. It is Bruce. Where are they going? Is this the other way where he found Jason? Or is where Bruce's parents died? Hmm. Everything I've done is to help you, son. Robin is tearing you apart. It wasn't fair of me to push you. I've lost too many people to Gotham. I won't lose you. No way. If he says he can't be Robin, that will break him. You won't. You can't make that promise. But I can keep it. Damn. I don't want you to be Robin. Damn. That was gonna break him. Please don't take this away from me. You don't need to wear a costume to be my son. Aww. I've learned from my mistakes. Oh, so I'm a fucking mistake now? No, Dick was. <laughs> and no matter what he does, you keep on giving him more and more. Give more pain. Please, just hear what I'm saying. This is not your fault. I don't feel like Bruce is really explaining much to him. Well, he's not really listening as well. You can see that Bruce has really tried giving himself to Jason. I mean, in the best way that he can, he's still, like, damaged goods. But yeah, yeah, yeah. he's actually being attentive and really trying to understand the pain he's going through, which he has before as well, and trying to help. He's not turning a blind eye like we initially thought through the conversations with Barbara and Dick. And he's um, also, he's, he's getting vulnerable and mm. he's trying to relate to him. And I feel like, I mean, seeing Bruce this sort of vulnerable is new because you don't really see that very often. But I feel like this is a long-term strategy where he wanted him to be able to own himself first and then give him Robin back. Yeah. Not to hide behind Robin as a coping mechanism. But it obviously doesn't go well because, but I also feel like, obviously it's for the interaction, but I feel like Bruce isn't really... Mm addressing the thing he's saying they give up on me and he's just sort of giving him these short answers like yeah he needs a bit more reassurance and he's not getting that yeah it's kind of like damaged goods someone who doesn't know how to communicate with someone who's really not listening and that doesn't kind of fit well together yeah you're wrong about me i'll prove it and there he goes so this is when he gets more desperate starts to seek out fear toxin and all the rest mm. liar jason where are you liar Jason. Damn, is he a black eight where thing has been kept? Oh, I'm silent. Okay. Sorry, yeah, yeah. It's funny, like you just call it to say liar, and that was it. But like the gates to, to asylum just open, like. Mm. Cyrus, would you be so kind as to get me a lighter, please? Cyrus. I'm assuming that was the police officer that touched his cell. No, well. Cyrus was the name of the guy that. Like, oh, the guy that. Um, had Jason Todd's body. He was yes, willing it in the yes, body. Yes, he was okay, willing it. Yeah. Yeah, okay, yeah, maybe he's related then. A collector's item from a very specific collector. <laughs> <laughs> the collector. What's in it for me? Information. On the man who put you in here. No. No way. Shit. I want Robin. To fly me out of here on his wings. The same way Batman brought me in on his. Damn, man. Some big ultimatums. Ah, uh, man. Jason. Far out, man. Well, I was just going to say, like, how many damn requests do you want? Isn't getting out good enough? You want him to, like, have this grand exit. Like, come on. Yeah. It kind of... The Red Hood that I know and love from the story had a bit more of a moral sense to him 
like his main ploy was to take down the Joker and he wanted to understand why Batman was willing to break his one rule for his love of his son, Jason Todd. Mm. So that was sort of made more sense. Now he just seems like he's willing to throw everything he ever fought for away just to get rid of his fear, which like, it makes sense, right? Like it's, he feels like he's lost everything that he ever had that was meaningful to him. Because of fear. Because of fear. And Batman or Bruce Wayne probably didn't do the best job of easing his distress about not being Robin. But yeah, I mean, it's an interesting story for sure. It's a very much more, a more twisted, darker take on the Red Hood and one that compromises a lot more on his morals than, you know, the Red Hood that I originally know. It's not one that you're used to. Yeah, it's just different. But I guess this whole Titans universe has been a bit different too, which is, is good. We need a unique spin, so I don't mind it. But yeah, seeing, him, it. seeing him go to such lengths, like willing to give up Batman's identity is pretty crazy. <laughs> I don't feel like he's good enough to outplay the Scarecrow, mm. especially if they're still together. But then again, he doesn't seem like he knows what Pooh Batman is yet, so I don't know what happens there. We'll find out. Well, even in the present-day timeline, you can see that Scarecrow's kind of pulling the reins and Red Hood is just following along. Sorry, it seems like Scarecrow is the one that broke Red Hood out, given his connection with Cyrus and all that. Mm. Maybe he is the one that revived him, after all. Or he had contacts with the League of Assassins, I don't know. I mean, hopefully we'll find out. But now he's really starting to play in their dynamic, yeah. Yeah. Right. So this is the... The bunk that he had with all the chemicals. So he becomes a chemistry expert now. Well, trying to anyways. Damn, so he's playing around with a lot of chemicals, so that obviously must play a big role. Oh, oh shit. Wow, that didn't go well. So he's trying it on himself, basically. Yeah. And who knows the long-term effects My of it. My question is, how did he get the suit back towards the end? He must have somehow convinced Batman that he was okay using the fear toxin. We'll find out. And Batman Him... didn't, didn't pick up on it? Like... That one seemed to have worked. We need to test our concoction on Batman's mm. most fearsome enemy. Did the formula take away just fear, or did it take away all emotion? Because he just said the formula was off as well. Knowing Scarecrow, he would have had an angle. He wouldn't yeah. be getting what he wants. Did he take away all emotion in a way to ensure that he would feel like he's part of the deal or something, you know? And maybe that's why he's able to do all these horrible things like kill Hawk and stuff because he's when he takes that toxin, he's just got no emotions, which would make more sense. Yeah. It makes sense to me that Jason Todd was willing to just do all that. Damn, and it, it looks like Scarecrow is setting up this ordeal with Joker now as well. So... <laughs> three days later... Fuck the Joker. I mean, what happens after that? You definitely did not fuck the Joker, my friend. <laughs> you definitely did not. Damn. Here we go. This is the breakout. Joker killed Robin. Now shut the fuck up, psycho. Damn. I love how he's smiling. This whole thing could have been prevented. Like, to have people, just random people visit crazy people in Arkham. Like, surely. Well, they obviously don't have that. Usually it's very tight servers. I think for the second story, they just had yeah. Jason Todd lock up. And maybe he's got connections because he's, he's part of Bruce Wayne's son and yeah. who knows what connections he has. I don't think anyone could just rock up to Arkham Asylum. It's usually a very remote and very heavily guarded. Yeah. There we go. There's the Lazarus pit. Fuck. Mutilator. Oh, wow. Oh, just shove him in there. Isn't there like meant to be this whole like prayer ceremony? Not necessarily. I don't know. No? Damn. Reborn. How does he have access to the Lazarus pit? Trump boundary. <laughs> that is very weird. Seeing the scarecrow just dance like a moron. I know. He's dancing like a scarecrow. Thanking Ra's al Ghul. True. Well, he left a tiny puddle of mysticism that even your friend Bruce Wayne didn't know about. Come on. It'll make you better. It'll make you better Damn. and better. Trust your doctor. So he's been medicated this whole time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And all this, so we can we know for sure there's something in the toxin that's definitely playing a role in manipulating mm. his brain. Please take my hand. <laughs> this is so weird. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's all doped up. With no hesitation, no guilt. Mm. 
No. Yeah. No guilt. It's taking away everything, I think. And we'll punish all of them for what this city has done to us. And then you'll be their symbol. Gotham doesn't understand justice. It only understands terror. Damn. Stand tall, Red Hood. So, so, so Scarecrow's definitely pulling the strings here. Oh yeah, everything down to the name. I'm not gonna lie, I didn't think Scarecrow could pull that much off. Yeah, it's kind of it. weird, isn't it? <laughs> Try harder! I wonder if he'll reveal his face to him. That'd I be think cool. he will. I'm not gonna lie, that'd be a sweet revenge. Please! Please! Damn, man. Beat the shit out of him. I want you to tell all your friends about me, okay? Oh. Hey, who are you? Oh, I didn't even show him his face. I'll just tell them myself. <laughs> Fair enough. I wish you did a little face reveal, those would have been bittersweet. Yeah, just right at the end as well. Yeah. I guess he doesn't want to be seen as Jason Todd at all. Here we go, the friend, Molly. I would never hurt you, Molly. Jason? Not really. Not anymore. Look, I know this is fucking weird, so I won't be here long. I just wanted to tell you that everything's gonna be alright. Damn. Look, Red Hood's pretty cool there. I'm liking, I'm liking the Red Hood vibe. Mm. More than I'm liking the Jason Todd feel. I like it that modulate his voice and he's got a yeah. bit of something on him. His voice does sound pretty cool. So what did you mean that that was still kind of Jason? I mean, he had taken that that uh, fear toxin or because that Because he fear was rectifying a mistake that Jason cared about. He was disappointed mm. that he didn't help Molly. He was trying to save that boy. That wasn't just the, you know, Cranes and Redwoods yeah. agenda of getting everyone in. So he sort of, he's, that's, you can see that he alluded to that. But it's like he wanted to close one loose end before he moves moved on. Moves on to the next, yeah. So Jason's still in there. Now we at least know why the Red Hood is prepared to go to such lengths. Honestly, it still breaks my heart that Hank had to die for it because it Mm. sucked. I would have loved to see the new cool Red Hood with Hank have more of an interaction. And maybe when he did call Red Hood, it was his genuine self that was petrified. But then he took the medication and that went away. One day, if we'll get more inf- information on what would happen around then. Yeah, I don't know. It was a bit weird. Like, it almost seems like he was acting. But even if it was, like, his true self, like, as in Jason's, there was still some kind of manipulation to an extent to even get him there to, like, carry out that plan. Because, yeah. you know, you don't get someone there and then, you know, conduct surgery, like, with... It, by installing a bomb without some kind of plan. Yeah. Well, at least now we've got some answers. It didn't make sense to me that the Lazarus pit itself messed him up that much mm. as normally you do sort of recuperate after a while. To, but it makes sense now if he's got Scarecrow's toxin manipulating his emotions, well, that mm. will turn even, you know, the best of men into a psycho. So that covers the how could he do the atrocities that he's been doing. Now that makes more sense. Yeah. So I was like, this is not Red Hood. He doesn't, doesn't matter how much you might hate, you know, what Bruce did to you or whatever. He's always just kill innocents. That didn't make sense. Yeah. In his own twisted way, he still thinks he's helping people while being sort of fucking disillusioned. What I'm interested in is how he's going to deal with all the emotion of this now after he snaps out of the drug and realizes he fucked up bad. That's going to be, I think, powerful. And but, hopefully yeah. they touch on Hank as well in that. I mean, they're going to have to. That was like one of the biggest things. Like they were brothers. They created this bond, this you know, connection, and all of a sudden, like, the death is on his hands. Uh, the death and, how the on Titan, his hands. and how the Titan's going to work with the Red Hood again, if they're going to work with him again, after all that. Like, it's, it's going to be interesting. Interesting. There's a lot of layers to happen. I feel like that's, like, a next season kind of thing, or maybe the ends of the season. I reckon it definitely will be a season thing. Do you reckon? Yeah, there's too many episodes... And at the, I thought Red Hood was going to be a small part of this season, mm. but it seems like they're really going to drag it out to be a majority of it, maybe the entire, I'm not sure. Um, especially with Scarecrow now, I feel like when they do maybe get Red Hood on their side, Scarecrow will be have one final play or something. I don't mm-hmm. know. It'll be interesting to see for sure. I hope we see an appearance of Bruce too. Like, I don't know, it'd be cool to see Bruce see what his son's been through and, you know, try and save him as well somewhat. Yeah. It's crazy to think that this whole manipulation has just had such a ripple effect in all these characters. I mean, Hank's gone, Dove's given up, who knows what's happening with Superboy at the moment. Gar's 
I guess, in his own world with Starfire. Then we also have Bruce literally breaking his one rule, killing the Joker out of all people because of this whole thing, which I find is mind-blowing. I mean, it's great writing. I, lo I love the story, but far out. Like, one simple thing, all this neglect, and this is how it plays out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's amazing. Bruce would have had no idea at the time what yeah. what could have transpired from his decision to take Robin away from uh, Jason Dodd. And it's almost as if when Dick and Barbara were, like, having their shot at him, that he was kind of convinced that he was neglecting to uh, Jason Todd. Even though he, he didn't, he literally told him, like, look, you can't do this anymore. I'm concerned for your well-being. And then... <laughs> Yeah, like, it's like he was made to believe that he yeah, neglected that, that, him. Yeah, they didn't really know the full story, so yeah. it was a bit of an uneducated comment, but, yeah. Yeah, but, it, which is a bit weird for me. Like, Bruce usually stands his ground, but I guess he's made so many mistakes, and, I mean, everyone's always here to tell him what his mistakes are. Well, this rendition of Bruce is very different. You can tell yeah. they've made him, he's older, he's more broken, mm. he's more tired and defeated from, you know, fighting crime. He's not a, a prime Batman. I mean, even... Other editions of Batman, even when he's old, he's defiant. This Bruce is a bit more spiritually broken yeah. after the things he suffered. He's even said, I cannot lose anyone else. Like, he's pretty on the cusp of, you know, an emotional breakdown almost. So it's, not, yeah. it's, not, it's not that same rock-solid Bruce that, that we know. All right. Thanks, guys, for watching. That's it from us. Don't forget to give us a like if you like the episode. And we'll see you guys next episode. Take it easy, guys. See you then. See ya.